how to set up a PDM team for success. This question comes from Tom. Nearly everyone is doing something with technology to improve the reliability of their assets, to lower their costs, to get more efficient, to keep up with the Joneses, right? But most of them uh, focus on the technology, and I'm telling you, it's the culture that determines whether a PDM program, any technology, any change is going to work. It's the culture that you have to address. So this video is not gonna address technology at all. It's important, but plenty of information out there uh, on technologies to choose. You know, so in this video, I'm gonna talk about how to best set up your PDM team so that they're successful. I got nine steps and I'll bet you haven't heard of the last two. Never heard them before, uh, but we're, we're very critical at my plants. This is Joe Kuhn of Lean Driven Reliability. There's two critical facets to uh, a reliability program. It's efficient execution of work and it's problem solving. And if you don't have the problem solving, if you're just doing the planning, scheduling, kidding, and, and you think that's the end of it, you're gonna be horribly disappointed with your reliability program. Have to build in problem solving, I'm telling you. Uh, don't learn, don't take 33 years to learn that. PDM enables both. Uh, it, it gives you time to plan, schedule, and kit, uh, and, uh, but it also allows problem solving because you find problems very early uh, after the, the, uh, the point that you can first detect failure. You can find them and, and then you can put in solutions to those very small problems. Like when you have a pit and a bearing versus the shaft's locked up and caught on fire, which one's easier to problem solve? 50 to 70% of your financial opportunity, whether it's production or R&M cost, is gonna come from problem solving. Take it from me. So get a sheet of paper and grade yourself on how you're doing. It'll be a little test at the end. Okay, now first of all, on the setup. The setup, there, um, you need multiple technologies, first of all. Uh, you need your IR, UE, Lube, Vibe are the, are the main ones out there. And don't try to, with just one. They, they uh, detect different failure modes at different times on the PDF curve. So it's best to have more than one. It's best to have them all. Okay? Um, if you don't know where to start, you're, you're clueless on what to do. You got so many opportunities, start with lubrication. That is a quote from Ron Moore. Start with lubrication. The vast majority of your uh, R&M costs and your unplanned downtime comes from poor lubrication practices. So it's an excellent place to start. You know, each tech that you have, say you have multiple ones, have them reach level two training, level two certification uh, in, in one discipline and level one in another one. So they have some cross um, education there. Uh, centralize. You know, if, if you're a big plant, centralize your PDM team so you got the synergies of that team working together. A little competitive spirit between the two, and if one can't find it on Vibe and has a, some questions, the U of e, UE guy could come out, or lady, could come out and, and between the two of them solve a particular problem. So I've gotten just Two plus two equals 10 when you put your PDM to get, uh, team together. Um, so centralize, learn from each other. Little competition is good. You know, it's best for the PDM team to be accountable to the plant's lead team. Uh, you know, a lot of discussion on who they should report to. Um, but I like the lead team because you need to bring in the asset owners, the deciders, the production people, you know, need to be a part of this effort. They don't need to have this done to them. They need to be a part of it. You know, they can directly report to engineering, maintenance, or even production. I really don't care as long as at least monthly, and I got some more detail on that, they're reporting to the lead team on what they're doing. You know, the key is for them to be focused strategically and not get pulled into the day of the day. Have them report to monthly to this leadership team, hey, here's how many hours a week I spent on PDM versus got pulled into other jobs. That's probably the number one sin I see with PDM teams is they're usually talented and they get pulled into uh, reactive work uh, or even planned work. And you gotta keep them on PDM. Um, Again, under the setup, utilize in-house resources versus contracted service. Service, uh, You know, you can get some great talent out there to come in and do your PDM work for you. They show up one day a month, come in and measure a bunch of things, tells you what's wrong, but you miss on the problem solving. You know, the if you use in-house resources, let's just say she's a mechanic. You know, she understands how the equipment runs and how it's failed. They've had to repair it. They've had to tear it apart. They've talked to the operators. Uh, they're, they're best friends with one of the operators. They know how the equipment is utilized. Um, 
after a leader leaves and leaders only stay in jobs three, four, maybe five years, when you have it with your craft organization, your PDM program, the program is sustained after the leader leaves. Very important, Sus that cont continuity. It's in the actually book, Good to Great, that continuity is important. Con contractors coming in on that one day may not catch all the equipment running. They may see 50% of the equipment running, they do all their PDM, and then the next day something fails, or next week something fails because that asset was not operational on the day they came in to uh, do their test. You know, in reality, most problems are pretty basic. You don't need to be level three certified on vibration to find problems. You know, most in most plants, you know, 99% of your problems, you're gonna say, hey, something's wrong with that pump. Let's change out the pump. You know, you're not going into doing, you know, uh, laser surgery on a, on a, <laughs> on a pump. You're, you, you change it out and then you autopsy it to find out what was wrong with it. Most of the problems are pretty basic. You know, uh, my target week for a PDM team is to do diagnostic readings, I mean, gathering data three days a week, one day of problem solving, be, in prob be involved in teams like, hey, lube, a lube team or like a motor management team, um, whatever the critical issues are at your plant, and then one day uh, implementing solutions. So finding diagnostic, problem solving, and putting in solutions, man, th that's, that's a winning combination. So that's your target. You're not gonna be there day one, but that's your target. You will be disappointed with results if you don't add problem solving. I'm, I can't tell you that enough times. You know, train your people on basic five Y and fish bone, fish bone problem solving. Okay, basic stuff. Okay, that was all number one under the setup. Number two, um, um, uh, you know, uh, item you need to do to set up your PDM teams for success is they got to sell. Leaders don't know what doesn't happen. You know, take a lesson from safety and quality. If you take motor failures from 100 a year down to 25 a year, don't assume the leadership's even going to notice. You have to tell them. You have to tell them why things happen because if it's something, in, if a non-event happens, it's harder to detect. I'm sure there's some psychology around that. But here's what I would do to sell and, and have done. Minimum have quarterly live meetings put on by the techs with the leadership team to report successes, failures, next steps, and any help that they need. Weekly, put an email blast out, at least two emails with, hey, we found this. Last time, this cost us $100,000. We found it early, and we fixed it for $1,500. Simple pictures use dollars. That's a weekly email blast. Monthly, put out a report. What did you accomplish that month? What were failures that month? What are next steps that you're going to be working on so everybody can feel a part of what's happening with the PDM group? Speak in dollars, folks. R and M, uh, you know, it could be R and M. It could be in additional sales. It can be an OE of a critical asset. Okay, salt into the discussion. I got another video on this. Opportunity cost with poor reliability. When everybody's in reactive mode and you're just fixing stuff as it fails. Everybody's energy goes into reactive work. So if there's if there's things that you're able to do because you have more time, because you're more reliable, less chaos, make sure you note them in your in your reporting to upper management. You know, uh, leader understanding. This one's critical, folks. Take leaders on the routes with you. Grab the plant manager and say, hey, I'm going out and doing a UE route this afternoon, at two o'clock. Why don't you join me from two to four? Let them put on the headphones. You gotta take the mystery out of the technology. Make them feel comfortable with it. They may have a financial background, a marketing background, um, a sales background. You know, they may not understand this. This could be voodoo to them. So help them feel better about it by taking a leader, all the leaders, one at a time out there and let them see the technology. Number three, establish a go and see culture. You've heard this before. Ask your leaders to join you. If you find an anomaly out in the field, walk into their office, say, hey, you got a minute. And then if they're not, they don't have a minute, go to the next door and say, you got a minute. Bring them out, Let put on the headphones, show them the vibration readings, show them the... The, uh, the lube analysis, let them see it out in the field. Take the mystery out of it. Okay, um, sell the plan to other, sell, uh, this is number four, sell plan to other stakeholders. The planners, supervisors, and other crafts, what is your plan to sell what you're doing in the PDM community 
uh, to, to get them on board. For example, uh, if a pump fails, uh, take it apart and bring it to the next toolbox talk. Show them the bad bearing, the bad shaft, the misalignment, whatever it is. Put on show and tell for the people so they, they have the opportunity to become believers as well. Um, asset criticality. You know, you got to focus on assets that will make a difference in cost, in quality, or in sales. What's your business case? Asset, you just don't go out there and start measuring stuff because you can measure it. What is critical to the business that you'll notice? You do look for quick wins, but make sure that you factor in asset criticality and, and work on the assets that do make a difference. Number seven, have a collective vision with the team, the team input on um, you know where we're taking technology. You know, um, the, uh, let's see, have a collective vision on, on technology based on, you know, failure modes. Uh, you know, is, are you going to be in handheld? Are you going to constantly do routes? Are you going to have fixed sensors? Are going to go wireless? Are you going to put in a lube room? You know, after you establish credibility by reducing cost with the assets that you have and the technology you have, how, when you get the opportunity, say you save a million dollars, go back and say, hey, we want $200,000 to invest in a new lube room or some new technology or to add a person to our group. Okay, recognition, this is number seven now. Uh, I'm jumping around a little bit. Uh, <laughs> number seven, recognition. Find uh, ways to reward the whole organization for PDM fines. So example, hey, once you get to a million dollars, why don't you buy lunch for everybody? Why don't you buy them all pocket knives? Why don't you do something for them, whatever is uh, uh, normal in your culture? Uh, you reach certain milestones, reward the whole organization. Don't just single out the PDM techs. You'll create prima donnas, the haves and the have nots, the smart people, the, the, you know, the dumb people. You don't want that. You want to be a team. This is a team sport. Okay. Uh, number eight, I'm on. Okay, require PDM fines to be a standard agenda item in your planning meetings. This is one of the new ones that I don't think you've ever heard before. Make, you, you have a standard agendas uh, items in your planning meeting. PDM fines, what did we find? What's out there? What's level one, two, three, and four? What do we need to work on? Make sure it's a unique line out. Otherwise, it gets thrown into the fuzz of all the other stuff going on, all the backlog that's growing, all the reactive work, all the planned time-based maintenance stuff. It'll get, that culture will overwhelm it unless you call it out as a line item. That's number eight and number and the first thing that I think you've heard here first. Number nine, require at least 10% of the planned work hours for next week, 10% to be on T, um, PDM fines, PDM fines. Uh, otherwise, like I said, it'll get lost in all the other stuff. Oh, we can't do that. I know you found that, but with the whole schedule's full with time-based maintenance. Time-based maintenance is not the future, folks. Time-based is a, is a estimate. It's, the, it's 1960s technology on how to keep problems from happening. Some of the stuff PD, PMs are good, but if you have a choice to take action on a PDM anomaly that is a known failure you've got, you know, that is going to prevent next month's, next quarter's, you know, three days of unplanned downtime, if you have a choice to do that PDM or to do a PM that may find nothing, which one you're going to do? So put 10% Require that of your planners to put that into the schedule, their proposed schedule for production to uh, accept uh, in there. So those are two things I think you've heard here first. Um, so, hey, that's my list. I gave you nine things. How do you compare to that list? What's your current state? Let me uh, know if you learned anything new. Let me know in the comments. Uh, hey, this is uh, Joe of Lean Driven Reliability. Begin your journey. Folks, this stuff isn't that hard. You know, if you got a question, send me a, a line. You got my um, uh, link uh, or email in the text below. Um, and if you, um, you know, you email me, I'll answer you. We'll set up a phone call, maybe talk a couple times, all for free, all just because I want to make a difference here. And uh, if you want to contact me as a consultant, I guarantee I can shave years off your deployment time and years off your, uh, your, your failures and your obstacles due to my experience um, in, in dealing with this. So shave years off your deployment. Thank you.